Well, with everything going on this year, uh, with the delay of the June exam and everyone crowding into the December exam and the uncertainty surrounding the December exam, I totally forgot uh, to start uh, your timelines uh, for the next exam, which is uh, February, level one for 2021. Uh, I should have had a video out a month ago or two months ago. Uh, time is uh, ticking away. Time is getting short. Uh, if you're registered for February of 2021, you know your exam window is anywhere between February 23rd uh, and March 1st. Uh, so to the February 23rd date, to the beginning of the exam window, there's 160 days uh, from today. And if you uh, take out 28 days for review, which is really what you want to structure before the exam, that's where you really ramp up and consolidate everything across all the readings. Uh, that gives you 132 days for content. And uh, you may think, well, that's a lot of time. Uh, I'm good with that. So I always like to break it down in what you have to do per week. And then you can determine whether or not it's a lot of time. It's roughly 19 weeks, but you have 57 readings at level one. Uh, so that's three readings a week. You have to go through three of them every week. Um, so you're putting in roughly about 18 hours a week. Uh, from here till exam time, you got to try to squeeze in 18 hours. Now that, that's on average. Uh, some of you or many of you out there um, uh, probably can learn faster, don't need six hours of reading. Some readings you can get through in two hours. Some of them are going to take much longer than two hours. Uh, some of the more quantitatively intense ones, you don't want to uh, go quickly over that. You can't learn math in a hurry. You, you, you really have to slow down and, and really understand it. So I say about an average of six hours per reading. That's to do the reading. That's to go through the end of chapter questions. That's to do a bit of review. That's to, you know, uh, make sense and understand what you're doing because you don't just, uh, you know, read the reading from beginning to end. You flip back and forth. You think it through. You sketch things out on paper. You rewrite a formula to make sure that you get it in your head, that you have the process in your head. Roughly about six hours a reading from beginning to end to the time you say, okay, I'm done that, I've done the quizzes, I've done the end of chapter questions, I'm good. Uh, so really, when you think about it that way, when you break it down in terms of what you have to deliver to yourself each week, 18 hours a week, every single week, uh, until you hit the review mode, and then in review mode, you're going to ramp that up to 20, 25 hours a week because you're going to be hitting uh, uh, mock exams. There is not a lot of time. If you are going to write for February, uh, now is the time because you don't want to have to pay that exam fee again. You don't want to mess up. You don't want to sort of pick up in the middle of December and say, I've only got eight weeks to go. I'm never going to make it. So watch that calendar. Um, for um, how you would structure your calendar as you go along, uh, well, you're gonna, I'm going to show you a calendar in a minute that will really structure your readings for you. Uh, but I'm going to show you a neat little trick on how to structure your review so that when you're done reading, you can go to your calendar and you can populate your calendar with the review for that particular reading all the way to exam time. Uh, after you're done a particular reading, uh, when you uh, learn something, uh, if this is uh, your knowledge, uh, it's, uh, you ramp up and you've got a lot of knowledge and here you are. You know a lot about that reading. You just finished it. Uh, give it a day. Give it two days. Give it three days. Uh, you'll lose most of it. So what you want to do is the very next day, review it for 10 or 15 minutes. So when you review it the next day, you end up doing this with your knowledge. You end up pushing it back up. And because now you've seen it twice, the decay rate in your mind is much, much slower. Seven days later, give another five or 10 minute review because you'll end up doing this and pushing it back up. Every time you review something, uh, you have it in your mind longer. It takes longer to decay. Then you can do it every 21 days and then you'll have something like this where your knowledge doesn't decay all the way down but that you're able to uh, sort of maintain it. There are lots of variations of this pattern. Uh, there are some with, where you review the next day, you review three days after and then it's every 10 days. I think that's a little much. Uh, some have it where um, uh, the space between seven days and your next review is every 30 days. I think that's a little too long. I think 21 days is sort of a nice uh, a nice intermission in there. So finish a reading and then go to your calendar and say, okay, tomorrow. Uh, it's 10 or 15 minutes to review what I did that day. And then on your calendar seven days later, mark that reading down for a five to 10 minute review. And then every three weeks after that, mark it down. 
so that as you start going through your readings, you'll notice your calendar populating for you. That by the time you get into December, you'll see that you have a day where you have three reviews. The next day you have two reviews. The next day you might have one, then, then four, then, uh, uh, then three. So that by the time you get to those four weeks of review, it's not so intense. By the time you do that first mock exam, you're going to say to yourself, you know what, I'm not that far off. And suddenly the stress disappears, right? Uh, once you're done a reading and you populate your calendar, move on to the next reading. Because now you've already programmed the reviews in there. And really, you don't need that much review. 10 or 15 minutes uh, the very next day really solidifies it. And then after that, you need 5 or 10 minutes. So I'm going to show you uh, what we've done on our site to help facilitate the reviews. But let's look at a calendar right now. All right, so um, this is free, by the way, our uh, study planner. You can uh, head to our site and um, you can uh, just sign up for free uh, and you'll have access to the study planner. Uh, choose your level, uh, your level one, and it says select your exam date. We used to fill that in for you. It was simple. It was June or December. Really easy. Uh, but now it's multiple dates, multiple times a year. So you just click this down and we'll click over to February and we'll just start it on the first date, the 23rd. And it's going to populate your calendar for you very quickly. If we go over to our dashboard, it'll give you the recommended sequence. It's quant, fixed income, derivatives. Notice that it's front end loading uh, the uh, more heavier quant, uh, quantitatively driven topics. That's because those take the longest time to work with because you can't read that stuff fast. You have to read it slow and you have to work those problems. It's the only way to get that stuff in your memory. You don't read quantitative readings and say, okay, I get it, I'm good, not without working problems. And you can't learn under stress. So there's no point in doing the heavy quantitative readings with three weeks left to go and knowing that you're not going to make it. It's better to do it up front where you have very little stress, where you can learn the foundations very well. Uh, we start with quant, number one, because almost every section other than ethics, almost every section will use the tools in quantitative analysis. So start there. Uh, and learn the quant section very well. And when you get to fixed income and derivatives, you'll find that the quant sections in there aren't really going to give you too much grief. Uh, we have our study hours over here. Uh, it's, uh, this is based on uh, 220 hours at 12 hours a week. <clears throat> if you come down to uh, this chart, this is a chart of, of possible pathways for you. Uh, here's 12 hours a week, and you look for the green check marks, and there's only one green check mark. That's the latest date you can start and still put in 220 hours. It says September 16th. So if you're writing in February, and you only have 12 hours a week, and you're going to put in 220 hours, remember now, the average studies for 300 hours, you're going to put in 220, you have to start tomorrow. Now, 12 hours a week, that's two hours every single day, six days a week with one day off. Every single week, you're going to do that right up until the exam. So suddenly, you start thinking about the ego. Well, that's, that's quite a bit. If you wait a couple more weeks, that two hours, uh, 12 hours a week, that's going to go to 15 and 16 hours a week. And then suddenly, you'll be three hours every single day. Uh, if you increase your time to 14 hours a week, uh, notice that the green check mark comes all the way down to September 30th. You have another two weeks before you have to start. But if you wait two weeks, you're going to have to put in 14 hours a week. If you wait till October 14th, which means you're going to wait four more weeks, uh, you have to raise your time to 16 hours a week because that's the last uh, entry here on October 14th. And the more uh, hours you put here, uh, the higher the hours a week that you're going to have to do. So play around with the calendar. If you uh, click on the first tab, Instructions, there's a video explaining a walkthrough of the whole thing. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that for you. Let's have a look at what we have to help su uh, support you with the reviews. Um, this, what I'm showing you now, this is part of the paid subscription. Our uh, full level one access is uh, 290 Canadian. Um, on October 21st, we have a price increase of $25, so it'll be going to uh, $315 Canadian. So right now, our full level one is $290 uh, Canadian. 
so just keep that in mind on October 21st the price does go up uh, here's each section all the videos uh, are, are within each section uh, and uh, there's a little analytic uh, uh, window here that you it gives you sort of a, a quick view on your progress inside if you scroll down uh, right here there's a, a, a file folder for all the review videos let's click on that and you'll get all the sections up with all of the review videos in there so if we click on quantitative uh, methods uh, there are the six readings that are in the quant section for 2021 you can see time value of money there's a 10 minute review for the next reading it's 19 minutes another 19 minute review so they're uh, all you know 10 20 minute review videos uh, that's if you listen to me at normal speed uh, no one really listens to me at normal speed typically the average is about 1.5 times and when you're doing reviews you don't need to listen to me at average speed uh, you can play the player at 1.5 times speed. Uh, so there's two hours, it says right up here, two hours and four minutes in quant to review all uh, six readings. If you're listening to me at, uh, at one and a half times speed, it would take you an hour and 40 minutes to review all of quant. Uh, so you can see yourself doing that maybe, uh, you know, well, every three weeks you'll, you'll be cycling through uh, these review videos, but it really doesn't take that much time. Uh, and it really helps you remember it. And, uh, you know, after your third review, if you're watching it the second and third time, you can increase the speed from 1.5 to 1.75 uh, because you're not really trying to make sense of what's on the screen. You're already familiar with it. You just need to hear it again, saying, yeah, okay, I remember that. That's good. That's good. And it's that hearing it again that really uh, supports the, uh, the content in your memory uh, so that it doesn't decay. You know what they say, right? Uh, you either uh, use it or lose it. Anyways, there you go. Watch your calendar because time will tick away faster than you can imagine. Watch that calendar and don't let this get away from you because you'll find yourself two, three weeks before the exam with five or six readings left to go negotiating what you can let go. And you'll be going into that exam knowing that you didn't do 57 readings, but you did 50 of them. You paid for this. Treat it like anything else that you would pay for. Okay, that's it.